In this video, we will talk about the behavior of water. In particular, we will focus on what happens when you mix something in water and how you measure the concentration of the resulting mixture. Most of the matter we deal with will be mixtures of different atoms or molecules. Salt water, for example, has water molecules and salt ions mixed together. Mixtures usually have a solvent or one type of molecule that is more abundant and acts as the sort of playground or room for the other molecules. The other molecules which are added to the solvent are called solutes. In human anatomy, water is the most common solvent. In the example of salt water mentioned before, water is the solvent and sodium chloride is Another way to express this same concentration is by saying the mass of the solute you have mixed and by describing the volume of solvent you have mixed it in. For example, if I take one gram of salt and I mix it with one liter of water, I have a salt solution with a concentration of one gram per liter. Notice that I can express this same value in more than one way. One milliliter, or one one thousandth of a liter, of this salt water will have one one thousandth of a gram of the gram that I put in it. So one gram per liter is the same as saying one milligram per milliliter. Finally, we can list concentration in terms of molarity, which is moles per liter. This is denoted with the capital M. A mole is a measure of the number of molecules. One mole is a tremendously large number of individual molecules. For any given compound or element, the molecular weight in grams is equal to one mole. You can use the periodic table to calculate the molecular weight of any element or molecule if you don't know the molecular formula. This is simply the atomic mass of the elements involved. Remember, the concentration of a solute is the amount of it per solvent, usually expressed in terms of solvent volume. Concentration does not depend on the size of the volume involved, only the ratio between solute and solvent. You can increase the concentration of a solution by adding more solute relative to solvent, or decrease it by adding more solvent without solute. On the top are five different solutions, ranging from very diluted on the left to very concentrated on the right. They are placed in order of increasing concentration of the colored solute. In other words, these all have the same volume, all five solutions or all five glasses have the same volume, but they each have a different amount and thus different concentrations of the solute. To contrast, consider the vast ocean and a glass of salt water taken straight from the ocean at the beach. These two, the ocean and the glass, will have very different volumes, but the ratio between solvent and solute, or water and salt in this case, is the same. The ocean has a vast total volume of the water solvent but also has a large total amount of salt. The glass of ocean water has much smaller volumes and amounts, but the ratio between them and thus the salt concentration remains the same. A great way to practice the concept of concentrations and dilutions is to perform a serial dilution. When thinking about a serial dilution, it might help to remember that a serial killer is somebody that murders the same way every time. In much the same fashion, a serial dilution is when you make a repeated dilution. When you make a dilution, you are taking a small amount of a concentrated solution and adding it to a less concentrated solution or just plain solvent. 
For example, if we add one milliliter of a concentrated salt water solution, which let's say is salt in water at 15 milligrams per milliliter, if we take this one milliliter of concentrated salt solution and add it to a bottle or some container that has 999 milliliters of plain water, the resulting mixture will be a thousand milliliters or one liter. The small amount of salt that was in the one mil concentrated salt water solution we added is carried over to the liter. So instead of having 15 milligrams per milliliter, we now have the 15 milligrams of salt in one liter of water. This measure is much less concentrated. This new solution is much less concentrated. If you repeated the process, taking one milliliter of this new solution into again almost a liter of fresh water, you would again dilute the salt water another thousand fold. So far, we have only considered or covered different ratios between a solute and a solvent. However, it's important to note that different mixtures will behave differently. In a true solution, the solutes are very tiny particles that do not settle out at the bottom or scatter the light passing through the solvent. We typically think of this as solutes that dissolve in their solvent, such as salt dissolving in water. Another type of solution is the colloid. Here, the solute particles are larger and can actually change the way the solution looks and block the light passing through it, meaning that the solution is no longer fully transparent. These particles, however, will still not settle out to the bottom of the solution. Settling does occur, however, in a suspension. Particles in a suspension can be very large and will settle out of the solution if given enough time. They may also scatter the light passing through the solution. Our blood is a good example of this. Normally it appears red, but if given time, the heavier red blood cells will settle out at the bottom, 